welcome back to this today's lecture we have been studying statistical mechanics more importantly we are trying to understand many aspects of natural phenomena that we study in the name of physical chemistry and chemical physics and the, those things the understanding of the huge number of physical and chemical phenomena like solutions, chemical reaction dynamics, phase transitions, all these important things important both in physics, chemistry, biology, material science, physical chemistry get you started on them because it is through physical chemistry you learn about properties of solvents. It is through physical chemistry you learn chemical kinetics, you learn electrolytes. Now, how does physical chemistry do that? If you reflect a little bit the physical chemistry that you studied in your undergraduate books or even in some time in the uh, in, in, in advanced schools, physical chemistry introduces many, many concepts. In certain sense, it starts with kinetic theory of gases as we have told many times. Then it might also takes the help of thermodynamics and we get the Gibbs free energy and Helmholtz free energy, all these different conditions and the and, and then goes into we'll talk a little bit of phase transition. So, physical chemistry tells you phenomena and tells you to a certain phenological explanations of that and to be specific to the today's lecture let me take the case of binary mixtures a mixture of two species a and b in the language of physical chemistry i will talk one as the solvent and one as the solute the other alternative language more popular in organic chemistry is solvent and co-solvent Solvent and solute has the disadvantage because it always assumes that one is in small quantity which is the solute. But many times we have 50 50 percent mixture of two species A and B. Now we know from physical chemistry that a binary mixture of two, two species like the very common binary mixture is water and ethanol and they so enormous number of a range of properties. Binary mixtures are very common because these are of much of our common solvents are a binary mixture because many things are not soluble in water. So, you add a little uh, co-solvent like add a little ethanol and become and water is a fantastic medium for reactions and it has lot of properties like the polarity. So, another solvent if we can mix it together and tune the properties then we get a huge amount of uh, diverse range of properties by tuning by varying the composition. But how do you know about the interactions between them? How do you know how water and ethanol interacting? We might know about water, we might be able to construct a force field that means how two water molecules interact, there is a huge amount of work that has gone into it or even ethanol some amount of work has gone into it. Water ethanol still is somewhat less thing, but is, uh, is very important. So, you are starting into a mixture by characteristics of binary mixture starts in the following way. We have we, we construct a, we study a property P and we vary the mole fraction. We go on adding increasing the solute little by little and then start the property. What are the properties we are going to study? We can start the properties for example, what is the volume x or excess volume and I will define what is excess volume, what is the volume of the mixture we can add constant pressure. Sometime when you add a co-solvent the volume of the two decreases than what it should be if they are ideally mixed. We talk of viscosity, we can talk of the dynamical properties like diffusion. So, the range of properties that an experimentalist measures and routinely study in their experiment is binary mixtures. In India it was a very common and very popular research of the study of binary mixtures. I know many, many people who studied whole their life on binary mixtures and, uh, and did quite significant work. 
another method of doing experimental study of binary mixtures is through sound attenuation you send a sound wave and you find out how the sound get attenuated how sound get absorbed there are a host of thermodynamics and dynamic experimental tool that we bring in to understand these binary mixtures so what i'll do now in the uh, in this uh, lecture today we'll talk of binary mixtures motivate it and tell you how this very important class of physical systems very important for physics chemistry biology medical science how we under would begin could begin an understanding of the physical properties of these things and this is done by as i said this to statistical mechanics and uh, and this is uh, is do we describe in this book that we have written uh, and this is in chapter 19 or something huh? oh chapter 26 in this book that we have done the uh, discussed the subject in, in quite great detail and we will follow this book closely but there will be some simplifications that will uh, okay so i just recap what i said that binary mixtures constitute wide and highly useful class of solvents then properties are quite different from those of the pure solvents that means i have a properties of a and properties of b when i mix them a and b has properties which are very different from that of a then something which you have studied at length probably even in schools but certainly in your physical chemistry is raoult's law raoult's law says that the properties of uh, a body p is x1 p1 x is the mole fraction so if there are two spaces one and two if i mix them then property p of the mixture becomes mole fraction of spaces one multiplied by the property p1 then for example i can take a viscosity then viscosity would be written as x1 n1 plus x2 n2 then the composition dependence so mole fraction uh, uh, ideal uh, raoult's law gives you a certain dependence on mole fraction which is here but you find a very large deviation from that now many properties are obtained by using the ising model as we discussed in a, in a previous lecture that how ising model now the binary mixture can be mapped quite well into uh, the Ising model, it was really done in the more appropriate in the context of the binary alloy. The reason it is more is the binary alloy because I can put a binary alloy is on a lattice like brass, beta brass that is used in my copper inches. This is on a lattice, space center cubic lattice, and then I can uh, it is easy to map. A liquid is a disordered system, and in the next lecture or two, we will be, we'll be discussing probably the structure of liquids that is different that means structure of liquids is quite different from that of a binary alloy or, or, or that because here we have uh, more use of statistical mechanics because properties are much more statistical uh, that means we would have to talk in terms of probabilities uh, so let us get started then so some simple um, eye opening kind of things that you have uh, one space is a by the red balls and then blue by the B and we mix them and it's one thing that you realize immediately that A and B can interact differently. So if I have an interaction potential and they can have diameters differently. So the diameters, let us see these diameters is sigma A and this diameter is sigma B. Then A A interact with the interaction potential A A. B B interact with the interaction of B B. So what do I mean by that? A B and A B. I have what in back of my mind essentially a um, interaction potential U R, and I have this kind of potential Lena Jones. Then it is the depth that I am talking. Of course, Hertz square part of the potential is important, but Hertz square part of the potential makes its presence failed in giving you the structure of the liquid and uh, but the thermodynamics the internal energy enthalpy 
many things which are property of the uh, which are manifestation or property of the structure is really very interesting role that this part and this part plays you know that means one part give you the structure then the thermodynamic that structure of course determines the thermodynamics and dynamics but on on, on that structure you have a liquid because you have intermolecular interactions this epsilon so these two play a very interesting role together and that i think i want you to appreciate so now go back to raoult's law as i said raoult's law is a law which is called ideal solution so ideal solution then ideal will be p ideal or p raoult's pr you can call it pr p raoult's is just what i wrote down however it is a very remarkable many many solvents so very mina, remarkable deviation from this ideal if it are ideal then this should be the line this should be the line of the straight line this should be the line but what do you find all kinds of behaviors the real numbers like here carbon tetrachloride and ethyl acetate here you have a cyclohexane which is very quite inert solvent in inert solvent and then ethanol then that has a marked deviations this is a positive deviation of viscosity yes and this is a neg negative deviation of viscosity and here in the meth uh, methylon and toluene these are fairly common solvents you know we all chemists all know about it um, that carbon tetrachloride ethyl acetate cyclohexane ethanol methanol and toluene but look at the kind of behavior they show one is a positive deviation and there is a negative deviation and there it is negative positive now this kind of behavior has given rise to certain nomenclature and this nomenclature is the one that we will go into now and then we will try to describe signal mechanics. So, purpose of this chapter is partly to try to tell you how we can understand these things. This is still very much an active area of research and lot of papers are being published and that one of the reasons that such, su such sudden interest in the last 10, 15 years in this area is the e use of computer simulations. This as you can see carbon tetrachloride or ethyl acetate or cyclohexane they are common solvents but they are complex molecules. They are not spheres, they are not like the spheres we just drew in the, in the previous uh, in the slides. So, they are more complex molecules and so the interactions are very complex. So, our analytical work towards this has been rather slow our progress in analytical work and so uh, it had it needed to for computers to become really important and then of course the in order to get the computer going I need the interaction potential which is the force field and that force field also has been developed or being developed for all these systems and that is a very rigorous and very respectable way right now the developing of force field is a in for force field development of force field for to allows us to simulate the system is a very respectable branch of uh, work in in physical chemistry and so I will uh, on the way along I will tell you what are the fields that one is working so that you basically know what is uh, the current status. So, then physical chemistry attains, statistical mechanics attains. So, this is what physical chemistry handed us from undergraduate, these, 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 and now physical chemistry, uh, statistical mechanics rather uh, wants to provide an explanation for these things. And how do we do? Now, we start with an interaction potential and we find that this kind of thing, which is uh, we, where the viscosity goes up, that means the structure becomes more rigid that is called structure forming here viscosity become less and we call this structure breaking and here there is a crossover from structure breaking in the negative part to structure making. So, when it is structure breaking the structures the A and B like each other and structure making the weakest structure which is coherent and that uh, becomes more rigid viscosity goes up and when there is structure breaking they, they are kind of stay away from each other and there are there is always an entropic component, but there is an enthalpic component, but and they interact with each other in, in, in these two cases to give this kind of a bizarre and widely different uh, behavior. Okay. So, how then we go in statistical mechanics, everything starts with an interaction potential, 
now we have the interaction potential such that we called a structure forming liquid stronger interaction between A and so now A B like A and B like each other more than A A like each other B B like each other. Similarly, there is a model 2 which is structure breaking. In this case, we assume either by note A by convention A A like each other more than B B like each other, but most importantly, both of this interaction potential that I, I continuously will draw this thing is more than A and B. That means A and B do not like each other or they like they might like each other, but they like less than B likes B and A likes A. This is the structure breaking and structure breaking is the one that gave this viscosity if I wrote viscosity against composition. So, this is the Ralph's law this goes like that the negative deviation in viscosity and will be positive deviation in excess volume. If I plot the excess volume, excess volume and excess viscosity go in the other way because when the volume increases excess volume is positive then volume increases on addition of two solvents then the viscosity goes down because the molecules kind of expand they kind of go away from each other ok and that is the structure breaking structure making instead they come closer together. So, the excess volume goes down becomes negative and your viscosity goes up ok. So, our force field then we write a we write in a, uh, we are doing the simplest possible thing now then we will go into make it much more um, uh, rigorous, but at the level of starting we are starting to build a theory starting to build an ex, uh, uh, understanding in uh, based on statistical mechanics. So, we start with the force field. The force field is the Renard Jones interaction potential and ja, our old friends 4 epsilon, but now A and B uh, like A, A and B is for when you have this for u i j is for u i j. So, when I have a u a then that would be uh, 4 epsilon a, a, a and the rest of the things sigma a sigma a b. So, this i j is important and this should actually be lower e. Okay. So, again to recap the whole thing if this is positive this is a taking a model like that then did some theoretical work both computer simulations and some sophisticated statistical mechanical theory and you can see now that you can generate by this kind of a model that we described here this kind of model one can indeed describe. So, this would be the Ralph's law. you have the positive deviation and negative deviation. So, the model that I am so this is structure breaking and this structure making. This under, so, what I am telling you in pictorially can one can do and how I will describe how does one do that in, in the next uh, half an hour or so. Now, there are some beautiful phenomena we studied little bit of it is called and it is given in the book in the StatMac uh, Stat book by CRC that we done. Now, there is a very important interesting phenomena that A and B that is I was I was just going to address. If A and B they do not like each other, how come they are still together in a liquid? Well, if I ask you the question I think uh, some of you already know and will be able to give the answer. They stay each other because what is the fact? What is the reason that they stay together? because the entropy gain. When you form a binary mixture, you get a large entropy that is entropy of mixing. So, that entropy of mixing contributes to making free energy negative. So, the mixture remains, but what happens if I suddenly cool the temperature? If I suddenly cool the temperature, then entropy contribution become less, then they cannot stay together, then they phase separate. So, the structure breaking liquid where A and B they do not like each other, but still are together in high temperature. They lower temperature they face separate and space separate through a beautiful pattern formation which is we see in nature all the time in volcanic rocks and in all the many other systems. And these are those kind of beautiful structures that I am showing you here is this uh, that so. So, A and B are two different spaces. So, the a, sorry ma, 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 red and blue are two different spaces if this is uh, our no this is our a and this is our b then when you lower temperature then they become beautifully separate 
this is another very interesting aspect of binary mixtures which is very popular in uh, in binary alloys and very popular in material science okay next we go and we now describe two cases where which are very very common uh, we, uh, i am still in the process of entering the uh, in, introducing the students to uh, this uh, beautiful 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 world of uh, binary mixtures one is water and dimethyl sulfoxide uh, the two popular two popular and useful highly useful highly useful in uh, chemistry and biology is water dimethyl sulfoxide dmso and water ethanol so dmso let me draw the dmso then dmso is is a sulfur oxygen ch3 ch3 this is the dimethyl sulfoxide and ethanol you know ch3 ch2 oh so the and then i have water so everywhere there is water here these are water molecules now you notice something very interesting in the dimethyl sulfoxide oxygen is negatively charged sulfur is positively charged and me, a methane group nearly spherical has very little charge so water molecules just surround this oxygen and water molecules kind of go away from methyl groups you know they kind of form a cage structure but they little distance away because they want don't want to disrupt their hydrogen bond ethanol again has these two parts which are not very polar so they don't form hydrogen bond but these guys form hydrogen bond like ox oxygen form hydrogen bond two hydrogen bond hydrogen form one hydrogen bond so there is a so these kind of molecules are particularly good because in these molecule a and b together so i have a molecule where a and b together i would say this is my structure making thing and this is my structure breaking thing if a is structure making structure is structure breaking then together with respect to what with respect to water molecules so this is called hydrophilic group this is called hydrophobic group and these kind of solvents which are very important are called amphiphilic solvents okay we will now go doing uh, and when you do that then the kind of spinal decomposition in dimethyl sulfoxide you see this kind of beautiful phase separation you know first they are together and uh, so the, they are uh, in a, a small composition they kind of form they kind of form micro micro droplets like the droplets showing here but when i increase the composition this will be what may be 10 percent and this would be what would be by 20 percent that they would here their islands are very connected and lot of many beautiful properties of water dmso very many beautiful properties because of these two these two phenomena so what i am trying to tell you now is that we are going to do a quantitative theory we are going to explain a quantitative theory but you should never you should never fail to appreciate that there is certain understanding which is coming from physical chemistry the understanding in terms of structure making structure breaking is a very powerful paradigm then hydrophobic and hydrophilic it is again a very powerful concept so what statistical mechanics does takes these powerful concepts and uh, terminology and picture from physical chemistry and then then kind of put them into a quantitative predictive theory so these beautiful language that we use and the concept they are not predictive they don't give you numbers they give you some understanding but they don't they are not quantitative they are qualitative so but now statistical mechanics what gives you a quantitative they give you how to a that okay now let's them get going now as i'm telling you that we want to a and b interaction potential uh, a so i have some idea of the interaction between a and a i have some idea of interaction between b and b but i don't have any idea about the understanding between a and b how do i find now interaction on, uh, between a and b now remember go back again and again i told you something that the force field the four, how do you get the force field the first force field was done after the expression of second virial coefficient b2 in terms of interaction potential ur remember the expression of b2 is it is 
uh, integration over dr r square e to the power minus u r by k b t minus 1. So, I have a temperature dependence of uh, experimentally determined temperature dependence of the second real coefficient. So, now I can put it into a form like Leonard Jones form and now I can fit. I can evaluate okay this if I have this temperature then I should have this second visual coefficient and I already have measured second visual coefficient. So, I have a nonlinear fit and I get the properties the epsilon and sigma of the Leonard Jones potential that is this is called force field. Then I can do many other things. Now, for A and B we have host of properties. We have diffusion constant, we have the um, equation of state, we have second virial coefficient. So, we have a control over sigma and epsilon the force field parameters of the internal. But how about binary mixtures? How about A and B? That is much more complicated because if I now want to say okay let me play the game of second virial coefficient or but, but then problem is that when I do that I have um, not just have to deal with A and B, I have to deal with A, A and B, B also. So, then the basic idea is that divide and conquer, we get A and A, we get B, 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 then I want to make A and B. But then I need a phenomena, certain certain particular experiments which is sensitive to interaction between A and B. Because I already have two other interactions hanging around and confusing me. And that is the osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure gives you this your inroad into interaction between A and B. The reason that osmotic pressure is so important that the osmotic pressure has been taught in such great detail in undergraduate physical chemistry. It is a very big thing in biology. In, if you have biophysical chemistry, then osmotic pressure is an extremely important thing. And we will explain now that how that goes and one of the major thing of this particular uh, lecture of statistical mechanics is bringing home that particular point that statistical mechanics gives you an expression for osmotic pressure and then you can from there it essentially defines a second real coefficient of the solute and from there you can find the interaction potential between A and B is very important. I need to know how A and B interact experimentally and okay that let us get started then. Okay. So, osmotic pressure as defined here that you say when I put A and B together then and I put them in a semi permeable membrane. Then the semi permeable membrane that allows A but not does not allow B. So, A starts coming from one side to the other like shown here it shows from goes from A to B and how do I stop that? I stop it by putting a pressure up there. So, this guy is in pressure P, but this guy is in pressure P plus uh, this is P plus pi. And pi is the osmotic pressure, we know that. So, we put a pressure on the right side where I have solute due to pressure on solution to stop the flow, and that excess pressure is the osmotic pressure. Now, when I stop the flow, then the systems are in equilibrium now, they are in chemical equilibrium, they are in mechanical equilibrium, they are in thermodynamic equilibrium. Chemical potential of the two are the same, which is same here. So, chemical potential SOALV is for solvent chemical potential of the solvent molecules so to be particular we have two chemical potential but chemical potential of the solvent molecules because it is solvent molecule that was coming from left to right same on the two sides so so, so the sol chemical potential of the sol solvent is the same uh, so chemical potential of the solvent must be the same on the two sides S is means in the presence of this uh, solution. This I know this U not P T. This is the chemical potential of this guy. So, now from thermodynamics I can now if I have mu in the presence of small small concentration of a solute then I can write that the chemical potential is written as the that of the pure solvent. So, this is a interesting beast. This is say at this is a mole fraction of the solvent that P plus pi is the pressure which is I am talking of this this right hand side of my slide and then at temperature T. Then I now write it in for in terms of the pure solvent, but it has to be at pressure P plus pi and then the correction term 
that is RTL and X solvent. Okay, this comes from thermodynamics. So now, since I have this thing and this thing, this thing now must be by equation you know, one and equation two. I equate these two and I get mu naught p plus by this guy here at tl x i is mu naught p t. So this is the this is the one equation that I derived. Now this is only one of the equations on the way we are going to derive them. But remember this equation. Next equation we are going to do is the following. Okay. Now we have to use the Gibbs dome equation. What we are going to do now? We are going to the whole idea is if you are smart enough you would be knowing from ideal gas law or from gas law that we are I, whole idea is to get whole aim is to get an expression for the osmotic pressure pi right that is that is the goal that is why I am doing all these things that is what I have written derived an equation in chemical potential. So now if I can do that my star equation here I want to use it but how, how, how do I go about now now, now I need then next piece of the puzzle next piece of the puzzle is to find out the variation of chemical potential as a function of pressure i have done variation of chemical potential in terms of mole fraction what i am going to do now as a function of pressure right and who gives you that who gives you variation of chemical potential with pressure that is the gibbs room equation that is one of the really i equation i like and it is a very very powerful equation and that is why gibbs room equation is so so important so here is the gibbs room equation n d mu v d p sorry about the notation of p many different kind of me but it is actually p is pressure here i divide this by n and divide specific volume v then i integrate from pressure p to pressure p plus p uh, p plus pi pi is the osmotic pressure i integrate d mu then i integrate this guy i'll of course integrate this one in a minute and then i integrate uh, i can do this integration this is mu naught p plus pi t minus mu naught p t the same thing as integration of vdp because the integration of that term so i have first done just the integration and the and got this thing then they i put it equal to vdp I, I probably would have written other way around okay now this integration is from p to p plus pi so i would have probably written it dp vd equal to then there's then integration mu naught p plus pi forget about p mu naught p so now we are almost there so now i bring this the combine the two things together and i get vdp and now what we are going to do we are going to go back to the previous slide we have already derived that so i bring this on this side so mu naught p plus pi minus mu naught p equal to rtln so I my equation is done. So I have this now I assume V is weakly dependent on pressure the molar volume is increasingly dependent on pressure then I get integration so V comes out this comes out and then this integration just give me pi so V pi equal to RTLN X and take I take on the right hand side so I derive this beautiful equation. This was done by grade Ventoff. one of the three major people who is phys physical chemistry one is um, Arrhenius the other is Ostwald and other is the uh, Ventoff and the first Nobel Prize in chemistry went to uh, Arrhenius second one went to Ventoff third one would have gone to Ostwald but presumably story I know that uh, Arrhenius did not like Ostwald at all so there is 1907 was Ostwald Nobel Prize, 1901 was Arrhenius, Arrhenius uh, 1902 or 1903 was Ventoff. So I remember I was asked this question in, in, in one of the quiz because in India we have very strange kind of fact oriented exams and I was asked who got the first Nobel Prize in chemistry. Mm, I thought quite a bit, chewed my pain and then I, I selected Ventoff. But no, it was Arrhenius who got the first Nobel Prize. But you know, it's but Ventov is one of the father figure of the solution phase uh, physical chemistry, and that that was what was the uh, early 20th century. That was the most important because people realize that we must understand solution. Okay, so this beautiful relation now. Now something even more interesting we are going to do. This is RTLNX solvent. Now I write it as 
x solvent is 1 minus x solute this is here then ln 1 minus x solute is x solute minus this is the expansion logarithmic expansion and lo oh and behold I get a beautiful so I take this term first term minus and minus plus and I get my ideal gas law this is the ideal gas law for solutions. This is one of the most important thing of the binary mixture. Osmotic pressure is perhaps the most important thing and this equation Van Toff, all these things were done by Van Toff. So, we now beginning to get an idea, we are now beginning to get an idea okay, okay this is how it goes that I have been able to derive the ideal gas law. Now, if I get a deviation from the ideal gas law in terms of the concentration x solute, then I will be able to get a second virial coefficient thing like that. So, I will then get an idea of interaction, effective interaction between B and B you know um, uh, and which will be very useful and also interaction between A and B. So, that was exactly the strategy was followed by Mayer in many years later and it was also the strategy that was Van Toff and Ostwald has. It is really all, it really makes a beautiful story. <laughs>